we'll take care of that. So, um, my name is Mike Brocky. I am an engineer at Ultimate Software, formerly worked on the Angular team on the Angular CLI primarily. And I'm John Zwicky. I work for Disney Streaming Services. And before you ask, no, I cannot get you into Star Wars land early. I don't have that kind of pull. It's true, I've asked. But today, we're here to talk to you about UFOs, unidentified forgettable operators. <laughs> I know. But before we get started, we need to issue a little bit of a warning. I'm a dad. And I'm a dad. So for the next 10, 20 minutes, however long we're up here, we're not sure, there's going to be dad jokes. And if you don't like dad jokes, the door exits are in the back or cover your ears. It's fine. But I want to start with a question. We introduced who we are, but my first question is, who is this? I know. Not, not you. Not, not me. No, no I'm asking that. But I know. Anyone? Incentives. Cookies. Anyone? <laughs> I can't see hands, so I'm assuming nobody has their hand up. A little bit of help. Anyone? No? Picture <sighs> with his friends? No? No? Maybe some granddads? Who was that? I heard it. Yes. Get up here. Get your cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. I'll deliver. So. You can explain. So this is, as mentioned, Michael Collins. Picture of the moon. He didn't sing Fly Me to the Moon. I was going to even sing that, but since the answer came out, you don't get that. So he was the third member of the Apollo 11 team. He got all the way to the moon, but didn't get to go down. He flew the lunar command module and, and orbit while Neil and Buzz went down to the Earth. So he's a little more forgotten, maybe a little more unknown, but he's definitely not unimportant, especially if your name is Neil or Buzz. He was very important. Otherwise, they would be permanent residents right now. So he was there so they could come back. So the important thing is, you know, he's you know, not unimportant. We might actually be able to call him a UFA, an unforgettable, unidentified astronaut. Could go that way. No. I mean, these are the jokes, people. I mean, that's all we've really we, got. We gave you a warning, so this is just, you know, more of the same. So. Yeah. What we are here to talk about is 20 operators in 20 minutes. We already burned through a few of them, but that's okay. We'll get through 20. Okay? That's, um, that, that sounds like a lot. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of operators in uh, the RxJS library. Anybody happen to know how many there are? Got another book? No, one. bye. But no, I told you no more answers for you. 114, no, but close. I heard 104, yes. There are actually 104 operators. I'm gonna toss these down, can you pass them back, Alex? Thank you. So there are actually 104 operators in RxJS right now. Uh, that does not count any of the static create methods. So of, from, from event, from fetch, not included. Just the pipeable operators, 104. So what we did is we decided to comb through the entire repo, <laughs> find these, the operators, and figure out which ones people may not be using on an everyday basis to find things that can add to your experience as you're creating observables and streams of data within your applications. And we found some really interesting things and a whole lot of interesting gifts. So hopefully you find it interesting, and we're going to move forward. Mike, I'm open. I know, I know, yeah. Okay. I got this. What I know the perfect place to start with. You do? OK, come on I back I know what over. we can do. And I even promise this, this will be my only, my one and only Space Jam joke. OK, one more, but that one's it. That'll be the last one. <sighs> OK. So you know how to kick this off, then? Yes, I know how to start with. S start with what? Start with. Come on, Abbott. What are you going to start with? I'm going to start with, start with, Costello. OK. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we like the groans. It's OK. So start with. What start with allows you to do is to kick off your observable. It allows you to put something right at the very front of it. So it can be very useful for asynchronous data to put maybe some C data in there, some dummy data. You, you know a lot about dummies, right? Unfortunately. So you can start with some dummy data or whatever you want to put at the beginning of your, your data there. And it allows you to kind of just insert that in there. So Space theme, we got to start with a rocket launch. I know ng-conf did it first. They started the whole thing with their rocket launch, but we had to have one too. The next operator we're going to start with is pluck, or continue with, not start with. Ow, thank you. Um, pluck is a ma an operator that's very similar to map, but it has a very specific purpose. It allows you to go in and grab a specific property off of values that are being emitted. <laughs> we had fun with GIFs, I promise. Hopefully you do as well. But it's not only just finding a specific property, but you can pass in multiple parameters to be able to find nested properties. But still, you only get one value out. 
Now, my favorite one is pairwise. And the reason why is because you can take pairwise, and it's the perfect way to pair a sloth with his fluffy, fluffy toy. Okay, maybe it's not what the operator is actually for. Um, we lost our presentation. <laughs> but what pairwise is actually for is it emits the previous value and the current value as an array, as you can see in those speaker notes there. So you get the current value <laughs> and the next value, and you can use them to develop, use that. So anytime you need to know what the previous value was, you can take those, and now you don't have to store it and have it. It comes with it for you. So you can use it to build a nice little thing here, like you see this min and max, how they interact. This is a little example, you know, built with the pairwise operator, built by a ruggedly handsome man who's a developer and, you know, might be standing right here. Thank you. I'll, I'll take my $10 now. I'll pay you later. I gave away my cookies, so. Uh, retry when. Um, you're familiar, you may be familiar with the retry operator. We can specify how many um, times you want to retry a failure. Retry when is kind of gives you a little bit uh, bonus on top of that. You can get an observable of the errors so that you can decide how more granularly you want to handle your errors to retry them. And by the way, retry is a bonus operator. Doesn't count as part of the 20. So when something goes wrong, you know you want to retry. I have trouble with slide advancement, so John helps me. So I retry when Mike forgets to skip, I retry. So the next one I'm going to talk about is zip. So there's a lot of good operators that are used for combining multiple observables, and zip is one of those. So what it allows you to do is take a set of observables and group them together, but you get all of the emissions at once. So when everyone here has their color, they throw it up in the air. Once everybody has thrown their color, once they've all emitted, you get the list of those. And it pairs them together, so you get the first ones and then the second ones. I wanted to demonstrate it right here with all of you and hand out color packets, but then it was messy and there's safety and all this. So told me that wasn't a good idea. Yeah, that, that's really bright. The colors, not the packet idea. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, that's all we've got, these jokes. So group by, next operator, is, allows you to specify a uh, grouping criteria to get your values grouped together uh, as an organized uh, output. So you like to be organized, organize your uh, values as they come through using the group by operator. Scribe, so scribe on is a good one that allows you to kind of add some configuration. So it allows you to add a scheduler. So when an observer subscribes to your observable, it'll get the scheduler with it. So it allows you to control, you know, the time of how it's going to go, you know, if it's going to be asynchronous, how it's all going to work. You know, you can do some crazy things with it, but anything a scheduler can do, you can insert here. So to really understand this one, you've got to really look at what schedulers can give you. Glad we got through that one quickly, because I was starting to get dizzy. That's why I look that way. Yeah. Throttle time. Uh, throttle time allows you to specify a period of time to pause values coming through the observable stream to slow things down, right? But it, you can specify an interval of how long you want it to wait, and then after that window is up, it'll omit the, next val or the latest value. Yeah, sometimes you got to throw, just slow things down. Absolutely. Probably not now, though. So timestamp. So timestamp is another good time-related one. It allows you to specify, get the time when you get something. So when an observable emits, instead of just giving you the value, it takes that value and inserts it with an object. And that object will have what the value is and when it happened, which is now. You got another value now and now. So you can just use the now clock. Audit time. Audit time is another time-based operator. Of course, there's the name time in it. And what it allows you to do is specify a time window to pause getting values emitted. And when that window is up, it will actually emit the latest value from the observable. That, that sounds a lot like throttle time. I know, doesn't it? it does. But there's a subtle difference between the two. With throttle time, going back to that, when the timer expires, it doesn't restart the timer. The timer will restart upon the next emit coming through the observable stream. Whereas with audit time, that timer will reset as soon as the timer expires. So it's a more fluid, consistent thing like these pancakes flowing across the street. That stream. explanation took a lot of time. It did. Speaking of time, we're running a little bit behind, so let's bump this up to ludicrous speed. Look, it's not a race. But if we're going to talk about races, let's talk about the race operator. So another one allows you to take your group of observables, but only get the one that emits first. And all the rest get it ignored. So if you're using the race operator, if you're not first, you're last. Next operator is skip. No, you can't skip. We need to go through all the operators. They paid for this conference. You get to get them everything, I don't all get the content. I can't skip the operator? No, you can't skip the operator. OK. So the skipper operator allows you to specify a certain number of emissions that you want to skip. So you pass in three, it'll skip the first three values, and then proceed to <laughs> emit everything that comes across after that. We'll, we'll let it play again. Nope, I'm going over. Skip one. Love it. 
So that's nice, but I like skip until. So skip until allows you to get a little bit more there. So you're going to skip things, you're going to keep skipping things until another observable emits. And that observable tells you to stop it. And you stop skipping and you now allow the variables in. So you, you're controlled by a second observable on when you stop skipping. Skip while um, is another way to skip a certain number, but you're not specifying a number. You're specifying a function that allows you to specify, I want to skip while this is still true. So if it goes to false, then it will stop skipping, and then you can start to uh, get the values that are coming through. That's, that's pretty negative of you, Mike. I know. I like to be more positive. I'm a positive person, so I'm going to go with take while. Okay. So it works like skip while, but you allow everything in. You're taking those values in until that predicate is false. So then when that predicate is false, we say, sorry, now we're closing up shop. So it's just the reverse. Everything comes in, then you stop it. Next up, tap. I know, I know a lot of you may be uh, using tap, but I like to think of tap as the unicorn operator. I was thinking of the second ng conf, by the way. Um, tap is a little bit different than all the other operators because with all the operators, anything that you're passing into it, the functions uh, that you're passing in, you want them to be pure. Same input gives the same output, no side effects. Tap's the exact opposite. This is the place where you're supposed to do your side effects. If you need to set a value uh, coming out of your uh, stream, if you're not doing it in your subscribe, but you want to set another value externally with some sort of side effects, that you do it. The other way to refer to tap, in my opinion, and I've heard a lot of people say this, it's, it's the console log operator. You have no <laughs> idea what's going on in your stream and you need to figure out what's going on, throw a tap in there, use console log, and find out and use it to debug your operations. So let's, let's break it down a little bit. Let's reduce things a little bit. So we're going to talk about reduce. So what reduce does is it allows you to give it an observable, and then all of the values are going to get taken down and reduced via the function to one value when it completes, and then that will get emitted to you. So now you can reduce everything down. You don't have to track it. You don't have to use a library that starts with the underscore character and a dot. You can just do it directly on your observable itself. Ignore elements. Um, not sure about the use case here, but there's a particular uh, state that uh, processes with ignore elements. What it does is anything that gets emitted, it doesn't care about. It's not going to let it through. The only thing that comes through if you're using ignore elements is if your observable were to error or if it were to complete. So that's the only thing that's going to happen. So if you were expecting values to continue to come through with ignore elements, it's not going to happen. You'll just know if your observable errors or completes. You want to join us? Oh, I, I was ignoring your elements. I was, I was being the example. I, Did well, I do a good job? Yeah, well, well played. Thank you for helping me with the explanation. So <laughs> let's, let's get small now. Let's, let's, Look at this tiny details. So min. Min does probably what you're going to guess. So you take your observable, you get all the values that are emitted, and when it completes, it gives you the smallest one. So again, you don't need to track. The observable can do this for you. So we're going to get the smallest one. Pay attention to those small details, Mike, the small little things. Yeah, little the, things matter. Yeah, the one thing I'm noticing is Pluto's not there. I miss Pluto. Pluto's a planet right here for me, always. I agree. I'm going to make things easy. So going with the uh, absolute opposite of min. So same thing when your observable completes, when the values are, are through, uh, it will give you the maximum value. So just like min, except here, instead of returning Pluto, it'll return Jupiter. That, that was very big of you. I, can, I try. So that's 20 operators. It is. We did 20 already in less than 20 minutes. So let's give them a bonus. So we're going to end with end with. So end with, it's our bookend of start with. So it allows you to put something in your observable and emit it just before it would complete. Um, so since we had our spaceship take off, the proper thing we should do is have that rocket also now land. But that's, you know, the idea of end with is it's the reverse of start with. So Excellent. book ends. And that's a good way to end with the operators. However, we've gone through this entire conference. I have yet to see Slostronaut anywhere. And it I figure we need to end with Slostronaut. Slostronaut's my favorite, so he has to be here. Absolutely. So, what we've done is we've just gone through 21, 22 if you count share, um, operators in a lot less than 20 minutes uh, to be able to just give you some in, uh, insight and some ideas to go out and explore other operators. I know a lot of us just happen to stick with map, filter, and switch map, and maybe a few others. But explore the other 100 plus operators that are out there and see what you can do to increase your use of RxJS within your applications to make it more reactive. So maybe some of those sound like they'd fit a use case that you're, something you're doing that you can now do with RxJS. So if you do that, you know, look into them deeper. If none of those really fit, we only did 21 of the 104. So go read some more of them. You know, find ones that might be useful to you. If you have them, you know, find them, look them up, play with some code, ask us some questions. No, don't ask us questions. Ask Ben some questions. He's here. Don't ask us. Um, 
but you know, use that. And if you're only using one more operator than you did, it's one more operator than the time before. But if you only took away one thing from this presentation, Michael Collins. Also, you may have noticed as we went through the slides, there were some pictures in there. I'm not an artist. I'm, I'm a pseudo artist. OK. But actually, all the artwork that you saw in there was actually from our kids. Uh, we had our kids color pictures and draw pictures, and we wanted to give a shout out to them. So thank you to our kids uh, for providing some artwork. So thank you for coming to our talk. My name is Mike Brocky. And I'm John Adzwicki. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.